Thank you for coming here today. Um, I, I always seems to, I always like to be back in Brussels, even if I move to another continent to avoid it. Uh, if, my, my sp if I want to put a, s a summary on my speech today, um, it's really about the um, um, sort of let's work together. Um, because I think that I'm going to share a little bit of the experiences with GDPR from my camp perspective. And, and I think that we have to evolve ourselves of working together. Uh, just start, what is ICANN? ICANN is a Californian incorporated non-profit organization that is supposedly coordinating the identifiers of the world of the internet. Basically what you do, when you go online and you send something using an ID, an identifier, uh, which is called the domain name, we, we coordinate them all over the world. Your IP addresses that you have comes really out of us. We actually constructed the system that makes it work. So we have nothing to do with any content on the internet. We don't have anything to do with anyone who sends anything. But every time you go online, you actually go and ask a root server where you can go. And we update those root servers with that information. And, and for your curiosity, on Thursday, there was many people who were afraid we were gonna close down the internet because we upgraded some of the security system of the internet. Uh, affected about 700 million users. So I hope no one in this room got disconnected on Thursday. Thank God for that one. <laughs> so, so I want to talk a little bit about GDPR from, from an ICANN perspective. And remember, we are a non-political technical organization, so we have absolutely no viewpoint on the law itself or the intention of the law. Uh, it's up to other ones, you, the legislators and other ones, to, to say if, what, if it's good or bad intent with the law. We only deal with the consequences. And, and you might not think about this, but because most people treat internet as, 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 as C, it's, it just exists. But it's actually, from a technical perspective, a quite, it's a very fixed box. And one of the things that internet, when it was designed originally, and I can let you know that when they actually designed it, they had no clue what to do with it. Um, it was a bunch of professors who came up with a technical solution, how to tra transport data networks, that was it. They didn't think about security and other things. They didn't think about privacy because it was not the intent from the beginning. But those parameters still exist. And one of the parameters they set up was actually transparency and accountability. In the internet ecosystem, the technical part, we had thousands of databases uh, with names. Uh, and they are constructed there so you can always know who's the source of something. Well, all the way from uh, um, protocol development, where you really want to see who actually wrote that piece of code, so you m make sure there's not bad intent, into something I can mention as well, which is called the WHOIS database. So when we look into, from ICANN and the ecosystem, we look into this, and, and we're not saying that the law itself is a bad thing, it's just that I don't think anyone actually thought through the consequences of some of them, and that's what we're doing right now. So, <laughs> The WHOIS database, um, which has been something that we were working on a lot over the last couple of years, um, I, and I want to explain what it is. First of all, it doesn't exist. There is no WHOIS database. Um, there are several. Just in the ICANN remit, there are about 2,500 slices of it. Uh, and there's also, the WHOIS is actually a technical protocol, which is used for many different reasons. So for here in Europe, for instance, there is an organization called RIPE. Anyone from RIPE here? who has a WHOIS database, um, which consists of data who gets allocated IP addresses. .eu, hi.eu, has its own WHOIS database, which is unconnected. And all the country code operators in Europe has their own databases. And to just give you some numbers, there are about 390 million um, top-level domain names, which you see as .eu, .se, .com, uh, and all those varieties. About 185 million of them contains in the, in the, in the 2,500 <laughs> databases we have. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Does it mean I can add two minutes to my speech? About 80 million of those domain names uh, are in Europe. Um, so from 4.4 billion internet users, down to 80 million domain names. So why do you have a domain name and why do you go on this record? So it's not a telephone book of all the internet users of the world. 
It's the people that has the domain name, and those domain names are used primarily for commercial uses, you set up a web page, or you want to be able to email. Every time you use an email, you use a domain name. So often there, are, there is a ledger more than a telephone book, and that's very important to understand. So what we did in May was in ICANN, we came up with, its, we call it for technical reasons, the temporary specification just to make sure we had access to the law. And what happened then was we actually took the whole data, the whole data, set of data, and divided it into two, where some of the information now is public for everybody to use, and some inf information is behind um, a sort of cover. That actually means a problem for me personally, because I'm a geek, and, and one thing I do is that when I get an email from someone with a domain name, I don't know who it is, I actually usually go into the WHOIS database to check who it is. And often enough, you could see names like Donald Duck, then I know that the one who has that domain is actually someone trying to fool me. And I want to point out that in no scenario we're talking about getting access to the WHOIS data, private persons who can um, be able to access that data is in that mix. We don't even have a solution for that. So here comes the technical problem for us uh, with GDPR. And again, we, have no in, we don't discuss the intention of the law. But the law is symmetric. The law is symmetric in the sense that you can collect data for your own usage, and then you can give out the data and use it if you have a good reason for it. We actually tell 2,500 players in the domain name industry they have to store the data. I can, as a non-profit organization, have no use for that data because we are not a police force, we are not an intellectual property, or we are not a private individual. And the law is very specific about the fact that it's the role of the data controller. In our world, they are the ones who are what we call the contracted parties who has that responsibility. And we can't enforce, because we have to stay within the law, them to do something. So what we have created here, with no intention, I think, is that when we now have many police forces, uh, intellectual property, investigative journalists, uh, and many other for good reasons who want to get access to the data and ask us how. And the only thing we can say is that you, we can't tell anyone to give you access to the data because it's defined in the law. So, and this is only one of the databases we have because we have thousands of them. And what we're going through now is going through all those databases and it will lessen the transparency Maybe for a good re reason. I mean, we are the first one to admit that maybe we didn't pay enough attention to uh, privacy issues within ICANN before, but it creates a technical problem for us going forward. And I think that we, I mean, ICANN, and as the CEO, I can admit that, has not engaged in the right way of, the, right way of legislation from the beginning. And I think we both need to find out a way of, com of working together in the future. Because I don't think that the intention of this law or the current invitation of the law is something that actually, that you actually want to achieve this. There are other, uh, as was said, there are many other places in the world that this legislation is now being discussed. By the way, we also have countries in the world who's now actually thinking of doing legislation to reverse the whole thing as well, just to make my life more interesting. But I think that going forward, with other pieces of legislation, we from a technical, representing the technical community in this, at least would like to be able to provide with the opportunity to say, yes, interesting, we don't, we don't mind your intention, but it could actually break the internet. And we have actually seen legislative proposals around the world that can take down the ability to send packets between two computers, um, for instance, through routing. And that will actually disconnect part of the world from what we call the internet. Well, I can exist for one simple reason, and that's to provide a service to the world. We, are not a, we, we don't have any profit. Uh, we're not doing this for any other reason to provide a service to the world. And that's the internet you're using today. We want to make sure going forward that we can continue providing that service as long as you like us to do that. If you decide to do something else, at least we would like to tell you that these are the consequences of the decision you're making because the, the road to hell could sometimes be paid with good intentions. Thank you very much. Enjoy your lunch. Was it interesting?